Hey everybody, this is Lucas with Texas Piano Restoration and uh, just wanted to do a quick video today with this Kanabi upright piano and we are going to be replacing the hammers and shanks on this piano. We've just restrung and done some work on the bridge cap uh, on the base, the base bridge. So now that that's done, uh, we're ready to put on the new hammers and align them to the strings. So uh, yeah, we'll move over here to the bench. The tools you will need will be a hammer extractor, hammer uh, shank extractor here, and uh, this little stock block as well. This, this clamp goes on the hammer shank. And then we're going to use this tool here with a heat gun to remove the shanks. We use the heat gun here to loosen up the glue on this. It'll start to kind of bubble up. Now, if it's too hard, it, it should come off easily. If it's, if you're feeling a lot of resistance, hit it one more time with this heat gun. There we go. I feel it coming off now. All right. Throw away our old hammer here. Now you're just going to want to clean the glue off here a little bit. Careful, these can get hot. So these are my new hammer shanks right here. I have already cut these to length based on some samples that I've taken off from the other hammers. Um, make sure when you order these, they, are, they come in a couple different sizes. Uh, one for a standard upright and then there is another size for small console or spin it upright pianos. So this is just you know your regular upright hammer shank. And they measure about 7 30 seconds of an inch. So I'm going to use a 7 30 seconds uh, drill bit to prepare uh, this hammer butt for this new shank because right now it's, it's too tight, so we're going to prepare this. I'm careful not to drill too far into the butt. I want to leave the length exactly as it was. So I want to hit the bottom right where it was. I can feel the shank go all the way down to the bottom of the hammer butt but I also have a little bit of play so that if there's any discrepancy in um, how this is lining up, I can, when that glue's in there, I can get it just, just right. All right, so we'll go ahead and knock out the rest of uh, this set and get all these hammer butts prepared for uh, hanging the hammers. All right, so we have removed the old shanks from every other hammer now, and I have glued in uh, the new shanks here, just alternating with the original hammers. Like I said before in the other video, they were all pre-cut to length, so they should be pretty close to the final height that I need, although I will need to trim off just a little bit. And now what we're doing is we're creating some guide hammers. So what we're going to do is on each section, this, this action has three sections, the base, the middle, and then the high treble. So we're going to use three guide hammers on each section. So two on the end, one in the middle, two on the end, one in the middle, two on the end, and one in the middle. So three in each section. And what we're going to do here, I have one of the hammers uh, right here. and. 
I'm just going to draw a line <clears throat> on this hammer. Here, this one's a little bit better. I'm just going to draw a line on the hammer uh, with the strike point. So I want this, this strike, this straight line should, should hit the string, you know, exactly where it was originally. So you take a little ruler, draw your strike point like that on each guide hammer, and then put those originals back on, and we'll use that to put on, to actually create guide hammers with the new hammer as well. But I'm going to use this line as a reference because the new uh, hammers are going to have a slightly different shape. They might, the tail might be slightly different. They might be a little bit longer. And um, so we want to use, ultimately our guides will be new hammers, but the guides will be based on these hammers. All right, just a quick word here on this Kanabi. So I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently on this action. Um, normally I might not have to alternate the hammers like I'm doing here. And also normally you can glue on the new hammer and the shank all at the same time. Um, but here on this action, uh, this is this is a style where the hammer butt flange and the damper flange are the same thing. Okay, they're connected. Right, uh, you'll see this on some older Steinway uprights and um, just some older uprights in general. I don't know the exact term for this, but uh, they share a flange, the hammer butt and the damper. Flange. They share this flange in the middle. So because of that, it's a little different. I decided on this one to go ahead and alternate the hammers and do the shanks first, glue the shanks in first. Um, and then I'm also going to have to kind of build something to tilt this action because this action has wooden side brackets here. So I can't use my normal uh, action caddy. So anyway, it's a little bit different. I'm, I'm kind of trying, you know, experimenting a little on this one, but the same principles apply. All right, so here we've got the new hammers. We're going to unwrap the package here. These are from Obel. These are made in Germany. I want to try to make sure we keep everything in order here. So I'm going to be careful when I unwrap this. Okay, so here we have our base and treble hammers. And one thing to note. Unfortunately, when you order new hammers, they are never numbered correctly, it seems. Um, I don't know exactly why that is something to do with the manufacturing process, um, but things can always be off a little bit. Sometimes the actual numbering will be in pencil, so it's a bit of a puzzle at first to try to, to figure out where the set starts and ends. We now have our new hammers laid out here. I'm going to start with the base section. And uh, I'm, right now I'm just dry fitting the hammers onto the shanks here. Um, but they're still a little tight. They do come pre-drilled, but they are quite, still quite tight. So what I'm going to do is just drill out the uh, the hole here just ever so slightly with a drill bit that's really not taking out much material but just kind of enlarging that hole just ever so slightly so that I can dry fit the hammer on. Go ahead and do my whole uh, section of hammers, dry fit them, 
and start uh, to put on my two guide hammers. Uh, three guide hammers, I'm sorry. One on each end and one in the middle. All right, so here we can see the first section, the base section, uh, is finished. I have all those hammers on. Um, started with the guide hammers and just alternated um, gluing them on. Here you see this, this jig I have is a hammer hanging jig made by Sp uh, Spurlock Tools. You can find that uh, at his website. Just search for Spurlock. Uh, here you see the three guide hammers on each section in the middle. And yeah, it's uh, just here's another shot uh, of the second section that I have finished and the trick here with this jig is just to um, you want to try to get those hammers level and get that little plastic with the white plastic part up against the shoulder of the hammer and that just creates a nice straight uniform line here is the glue that uh, I use I've tried different glues this is my favorite for hanging hammers the tight bond quick and thick and uh, yeah, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, hope that you got some value from this. And if you did, please subscribe to the channel. We'll have more tips and uh, shop videos coming up. And uh, yeah, please like this video as well. Thank you so much.